As most of you already know, two weeks ago I replaced my IBM slash Lenovo T60 with a Lenovo T430. Now, I absolutely loved the IBM T60. This is a great laptop for basic productivity tasks in school, uh, built like a tank, and they are dirt cheap online. I bought this one for uh, 10 bucks off eBay, and this is by far my favorite laptop of all time. I mean, it's just a great overall machine. Now, the only problem with it was that I could not edit video on this thing. I mean, it has a Core 2 Duo, uh, 3 gigabytes of DDR2, Intel integrated graphics, and this is not going to, uh, this is not going to play well with Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is going to my mom, and I bought a T430 off eBay for $125. Um, base specs included a dual core i5. Uh, I don't remember the model number off the top of my head. I'll throw that up on the screen right now. Four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I threw in a 120 gigabyte Adata SP550 solid state drive. And it's equipped with the 1366 by 768 display. Now, those still aren't quite video editing specs. So today we're gonna be throwing some upgrades into this thing. I spent quite a bit on this laptop. I wasn't really too worried about price. Um, you know, as long as I stayed under like within 400, $300, something like that. I wasn't too uh, concerned with, you know, keeping the price low on this because I want this to last at least the next year. Um, and I want to really equip it to the teeth with all I could. So uh, we're going to be throwing 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM into this thing. I have a quad core i7 right in front of me. This is the uh, uh, 3612QM uh, i7 quad core, eight threads. And I bought this for 107 bucks off eBay. I'm also going to be upgrading the 1366 by 768 display with the 1600 uh, by 900 display. I have that right in front of me. And I'm gonna be swapping out the keyboard uh, with the backlit keyboard, which comes on the higher end models. I wasn't gonna do this at first, but I was browsing through eBay and one of my friends suggested I should just go ahead and uh, go big or go home. Um, so I just decided to get the backlit keyboard. Now, the keyboards are textured differently, unfortunately. The backlit keyboard is smooth, where the keys, well, the keys on the uh, non-backlit keyboard are rough. And I like the rough finish a lot better. Um, but these are probably more sanitary. There's not like any holes or anything for bacteria to get in. Um, so the back backlit smooth keyboard might be uh, the better option in this case, even though I don't like the feel as much. Since I have been using this thing for the past two weeks, I have already made some upgrades to it. As you can see, this has the nine cell battery uh, on the back and it originally came with the six cell battery. I bought this for $69 off eBay and some of you guys are probably wondering why I paid so much. Well. That's because this is a genuine brand new Lenovo battery. This is the real deal. It's not one of those uh, no name knockoffs that you find all over eBay. This is a legit Lenovo battery. And for real brand new Lenovo batteries, um, you know, they cost quite a bit. So that's why that was nearly 70 bucks. I also bought the slice battery. With the slice battery and the nine cell battery, I get a total of around 15 hours of battery life. Um, the only problem with the slice battery is that it adds a significant amount of bulk to the laptop. So I only use it when I need it. Um, but this was, you know, only 25 bucks on eBay and it gives me, you know, pretty much all day battery life depending on how I'm using the laptop. Maybe, you know, a couple days if I'm just using it periodically. So this was a great purchase um, as well. If you want to check out either of these or any of these parts, actually, I'll put all the links to them down in the description. So I'm going to put this over here. And some of you are probably confused right now because you only saw a eight gigabyte stick of DDR3 and I said I was gonna upgrade this to 16 gigabytes of DDR3. Well, that's because I went over to my friend's house. He had an eight gigabyte stick of DDR3. I bought it from him for 30 bucks and I threw it in this machine already. So currently this thing is rocking 12 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. When we throw this in here, uh, it's gonna be rocking a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So that should be plenty for editing. I don't think I have anything else to talk about, so I'm gonna grab my screwdriver. We're gonna pull this thing apart. I'm gonna speed up the footage. And please do keep in mind that this is not meant to be a disassembly guide. Do not use this video as a disassembly guide for the T430.
The 1600 by 900 display is now installed. It was really easy to just take the old screen off and put the new screen on. No troubles there. I haven't connected everything just yet because I want to take the CPU heatsink out first and replace the processor. I'm going to do this all in one run, which is probably a really bad idea because, you know, I'm probably going to turn this thing on and nothing's going to happen. Um, and by all in one run, I mean I'm not going to power it on until I finish all the upgrades. Usually uh, I'll do it stepwise. So I'll install something and then turn on to make sure it works. But as you can see, this thing's so far apart that's going to take a little bit to uh, actually like hook up the keyboard and power it on and everything. And I don't feel like doing that right now. Um, so we're not going to do the uh, stepwise approach. We're just going to do it all uh, in one swoop. So I'm going to take the processor out, put the new one in, take the RAM out, put the new RAM in, hook all this stuff back up, and then see if it powers on. Now, the hardest part about this disassembly was removing the top bezel right here because it was held in by a bunch of plastic clips. Uh, much easier to take apart than the T410 for sure, uh, but the plastic clips were just a pain. I had a little bit of trouble there, and in the fast forward footage, you might be able to see that because I was just struggling. So it's not completely reassembled yet. I still got some screws laying over there, but I'm going to test it out now. I have the nine cell battery and crossing my fingers, please turn on and come on, come on. Oh, nothing. All right. So it looks like, uh, looks like that was a bad idea. I'm going to have to go back and, uh, uh, see what went wrong. So there is some weird stuff going on right now. Not really sure what happened, but for some reason, this slot is completely non-functional. Every time I put a stick of RAM in it, the system will not boot up, and I have no idea why. It might be a result of swapping out the processor, but that really doesn't make sense. This processor um, should be able to support two channels of RAM. Uh, every time I put in a stick, once again, it will not boot. Uh, this stick is functional. I tested it out in the back slot of this PC, and currently I have a 8GB uh, stick of DDR3 in the back slot of this PC. And of course, this stick is functional as well. Uh, and I tried just booting it in the original configuration with the one stick of DDR3 uh, in here, right in the front, and it wouldn't boot. It's really weird. I have no clue what happened. I've been troubleshooting for the past like 30 minutes and I can't figure it out. Um, I tried cleaning up the contacts down here with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol on the toothbrush. That didn't solve anything. Of course, I tried blowing it out before that. Um, and once again, I tried swapping around the sticks and no go. I don't know. That slot is just not working anymore. I mean, I could grab the processor and put it back in here and see if it starts working again. Um, but I really don't want to do that because I already put all the screws back in. We're pretty much done with the upgrade. What I could do is just return the stick of DDR3 and buy one of these bad boys. Um, but the only problem with that is that it's nearly triple the price of a single 8 gigabyte stick of DDR3. I might go on eBay and see if I can get a uh, 16 gigabyte stick. But for some reason, now the system will only use one stick of RAM in the back slot. Not really sure what happened. If any of you guys know what might be up with that, you no, know, please leave a comment in the comment section. The system is still functional, um, minus that one slot. But for some reason, now that one slot just won't work. So it beats me. Not really sure what's up with that. Um, that's going to require some further research and troubleshooting later on. But as you can see, the system is ready to go. And if I save and exit setup, we should be able to boot into uh, Ubuntu Mate. And there we go, we booted up into Ubuntu Mate with no problem, and yes, I am pronouncing it as Mate, even though there's no accent over the E, because that's how the developers want it to be pronounced. If you have a problem with that, please take it up with the developers, and not me. So you can see, our i7 is installed. What in the world did it go? I had it up just a second ago, and it uh, disappeared. There we go. Our i7 3612QM processor installed, running at 1 point, or 2.1 gigahertz, and of course, that does have uh, Turbo Boost enabled, and then if we scroll down here we can see our single stick of eight gigabytes of ddr3 oh that's so sad i i still have no idea why that one slot just decided to stop working when we threw in the new processor I, i'm not really sure what caused that um so yeah i'm gonna try to sell some of these parts right here get my money back and then buy a uh, 16 gigabyte stick of ddr3 so i can run 16 gigs in this thing because yes you can edit on eight gigabytes um 
but it's really not comfortable for me at least. Uh, things start to slow down and I just really don't like editing with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's not a fun experience. You can do it, but I'd rather not. Uh, if we scroll down here, I don't think there's really anything else too interesting. And of course, I am going to boot into Windows and run some benchmarks. And if we open up the Task Manager, you can see all eight of our threads are being detected. So let's benchmark this thing and compare results before and after the upgrade. Looking at the benchmarks, you can clearly see a difference between the scores before the upgrade and the scores after the upgrade. With Passmark, we're looking at about 200 more points with this i7 CPU. And with uh, 3D Mark, you can see some marginal improvements in frame rates and physics scores. Now, I did take the liberty to run Prime95 on this thing for 15 minutes just because I was a little bit concerned about temperatures. I mean, uh, the TDP of this i7 and the TDP of the i5 are the same, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that their temperatures are going to be exactly the same. Um, so I ran uh, Hardware Monitor and Prime95 alongside each other, uh, and temperatures never went above 90 degrees Celsius. And Considering that Prime 95 is really a worst case scenario, um, that should be perfectly fine. Now I could run and look at all the benchmarks in the world, but that doesn't really mean too much to me. What I want to see now is how well the system edits video after the upgrade. So granted, we only have 8 gigabytes of DDR3, but it still should be able to handle video editing. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is actually attempt to throw together this video using this laptop and uh, if you look below me as you can see mechanical keyboard just came in so I'm really excited about this there's going to be a video um, about this the docking station and uh, a bunch of other components in the next week it's a big project uh, and I don't want to spoil too much for you guys so I'm not going to talk too much uh, more about it right now but I'm going to put the camera behind me we're going to try to edit some of this video together and see what the experience is like I've spent about an hour editing this video together, and overall, it's been a pleasant experience. The only thing uh, that's really been an issue is the screen size. Um, but then again, this is a mobile editing setup, and you know, smaller screen size is kind of a given there. Um, even the eight gigabytes of RAM really hasn't been a limitation thus far. Um, it's been editing just fine with eight gigabytes of RAM. I do still want to upgrade it to uh, sixteen sometime in the near future, but. You know, it seems like we can edit video together uh, on the go with just 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's completely sufficient. So overall, I'm definitely satisfied with this upgrade. Uh, did cost a little bit, but I'm completely fine with that once again. Now, this isn't a gaming machine, definitely isn't a gaming machine. Um, but that's not an issue because I'm not really a big gamer, you know, I just need it for editing, just need it for uh, computer engineering, opening up IDEs, programming, that kind of thing. Um, so it's not going to see too much uh, as far as graphics are concerned. Yeah, I do do some CAD stuff, but you know, the Intel HD uh, 4000 graphics can handle that just fine. And it's, it's handled 1080p uh, video at 60 FPS just fine. It's handled editing that video just fine. So Everything works great with this computer. The RAM thing's really annoying me. Not really sure what's going on there. I really need to get to the bottom of that. So if you guys have any suggestions, uh, please post a comment in the comment section. Maybe updating the BIOS might do something, but I heard updating the BIOS for, uh, I think, models above the T430 is the uh, pain in the butt. Um, there's some loopholes you have to jump through or something like that. I swear I read that somewhere. Uh, but overall, happy with the upgrade. And this is going to make one heck of a decent school machine and editing machine. Um, so that's going to be about it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, I keep moving away from the microphone on accident. I'll put it closer to my mouth because uh, I know I'm fading out right now. Uh, if you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links that I said already. You can also support me by checking out our Patreon. And of course, don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology, will, uh, where we will actually be making some changes to my setup right here. So uh, that's a really neat video coming up. Stay tuned for that one. And I will see you in that video.